Welcome to How Sweet the Sound Behind the Music, sponsored by the Ad Council and their Sound It Out campaign. Their Sound It Out campaign uses music to help parents and caregivers connect with their kids about emotional well-being. Dr. Aldewan Tart is an expert psychologist in faith, relationships, and mental health. Not only is he the youngest African-American to receive his PhD in clinical psychology from the University of Michigan, he's also a licensed and ordained minister who promotes mental health, healthy relationships, and healthy families. A recipient of the NAACP Award for a Lifetime Achievement in Empowering Youth and Families, Dr. Tart serves as a frequent psychology expert for CNN, HLN, and various media outlets, including his personal YouTube channel with 1 million total views. Dr. Tart is the resident psychology expert for Radio One and appears regularly on the Willie Moore Jr., Katie Bow, Darlene McCoy, Ricky Smiley, and Cafe Mocha syndicated radio shows. Also with us today, we have Miss Latrice Pace. Born into Atlanta's first family of gospel music, Latrice was destined to venture into the arts and entertainment industry. Her musicality has embodied over 20 years of theatrical and vocal works. Latrice has worked with respective industry directors, such as Tony Award winner Kenny Leon and David Bell in Gut Bucket Blues, NAACP Award winner Tyler Perry in What's Done in the Dark, and Robert Townsend. Artists such as LaShun Pace, Jennifer Holliday, and members of her family group, the Pace Sisters and Donald Lawrence and Company of Chicago, Illinois. Author of the self-help book, Be the Change and Cakes winner of Lifetime TV's Supermarket Star. With a career paved with bold, creative achievements and highlighted by a series of firsts, she has Broadway in view. Please welcome Miss Latrice Pace. So thank you both for sitting with us today as we focus on mental health. Dr. Tart, please tell us about the great work you're doing. Well, I'm really excited. You know, we're still in Mental Health Awareness Month, which has opened up so many doors and so many different places for people actively talking about mental health. We can we can admit that some days we don't feel our best mm -hmm. and still be blessed as believers. So I've had an opportunity to do a lot in schools with the Sound It Out campaign, doing a lot of interviews and, and, and helping uh, parents understand their kids do have mental health needs. It is it is real and be able to give them resources to get families talking and being in high schools and in middle schools and colleges and helping people to talk about their mental health. So this is a, a very, very good time. And I'm headed on vacation. So uh, I'm, I'm very, very, very happy and pleased <laughs> that all of that's happening in one month. Yes. Amen. Amen. So as a psychologist and a minister, so you're a man of faith, can you tell us how you feel faith and mental health connect? Well, they've always connected, you know. So when I was in church um, like years ago and the pastor said for the final time that I could tolerate, all you need is Jesus, right? You don't, you don't need a doctor. You don't need psych they didn't even mention a psychologist. You know, I went up to him and said, you know, that's not true. You need, you need both. And so... Um, merging, merging those two has been instrumental. And so when we think about it, God cares about how we feel. Our emotions are what make us unique. You can have two people in the same situation and they can feel differently. And if we think about Jesus, you know, Jesus does care about how we feel. When the woman was being stoned, who was an adulterer, he, he, he empathized with her. You know, he said, oh, you know, if you're without sin, cast the first stone and everyone went away. And so he cared about her feelings. He cared about how Moses felt when he ran away. He cared about how Paul felt. It, through, he cared about how Esther felt. So you see throughout the Bible, feelings are dominant. Mm -hmm. So why wouldn't mm -hmm. feelings, uh, emotions and, and spirituality and religion, why wouldn't they mer merge? And so that's my role as a Christian psychologist is to uh, facilitate that for, for and with the church. Mm, mm -hmm. Now, I know you mentioned you're, you're coming back from vacation or you're going on vacation. And, you know, I just with with your impressive bio, I can't imagine that you have much free time. But can you tell us how how else do you take care of your mind during mental health awareness? If you want me to be transparent, I was doing a workshop about two months, two weeks ago, and I said, hey, a key to a healthy marriage and overall 
happiness is having fun. Mm. And I said, you should conduct a fun audit. And they said, well, you know, what, what's on your fun audit? <laughs> and after it, I actually had to pull out my phone and I listed 17 things that are on my fun audit. Mm-hmm. Like zip line and yeah. fishing. <laughs> so so what I've done is I've actually scheduled. I just got back from a Braves game, right, ah. here in Atlanta. So I scheduled fun in my schedule so that I'm not just working, not just being a husband, not just being a father. Mm-hmm. I'm actually able to have fun. And so I have fun activities planned throughout the year. The next one um, I, I think is going to be uh, something related to uh, ATV in. I'm just throwing that out there. So I'm looking forward to We have a lot of land in Alabama, so hopefully I can go ATV on my own land. So that's <laughs> yeah. how I take care of myself. Because nice. Al- Alderwan exists outside of Minister Tart, Dr. Tart, Baby, Daddy. I need mm-hmm. to be Alderwan sometimes. Otherwise, all those things are going to be contaminated, and I'm not going to be the best version of myself. Mm, mm, very well said, very well said. Latrice, you are a busy woman, musical artist, how do you find time to prioritize your mental health? Oh, wow. That is, I'm, I'm really stuck on Dr. Tart. I'm going to uh, I'm going to add fun audits to my list of things that I do. But uh, being an introvert, um, I spend a lot of quality time alone. And I think with being an artist, you give so much of yourself to others often. So I am recharged when I spend time alone, when I do my morning stretches or even morning meditation, prayer time. Uh, all of those things are beneficial for me and are non-negotiable. Yeah, I'm with Latrice. I like, I like the mix. I like the mix because I'm not in front of, yeah. you know, thousands of people like Latrice, you know. Uh, but I'm front, f- I'm front facing people, right? People mm-hmm. are in, you know, I see them directly, very intimate. And so I also, so she inspired me. I also enjoy time by myself as well in, in, in the word, fishing, relaxing, doing things yeah. all, all by myself. Come on, Linda, help me out. <laughs> she, she ain't never right. gonna call me. She ain't gonna never call me to fill in or back yes, up. I will. <laughs> <laughs> therapy we, we hey we can do a great duo uh, <laughs> i do the therapy we'll leave, we'll leave the music to you you probably could do both but i can't do the music right so do you so latrice do you find so i know you said you you find that music helps your mental health do you find that performance or helps you with mental health or do you find that maybe just like listening and meditating on on, on music yourself does that uh, performance does help but um, you have to do that personal self-care first, because if you don't, you're just simply be up there bleeding over people, trying to heal others mm. when you yourself is. So the only way to be truly effective, like uh, Dr. Tart said earlier, you know, he he pra- he um he implements fun time, but he's not just telling others to do it. He has to do it himself. So they're going on vacation. So if I'm telling others or or even singing about being healing. I have to know what that process is like being of, of trying to accomplish being healed myself or or else the people won't really connect. They they connect with music allows people to feel mm. it, it takes you to a place. It, 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 it it's um, it's very emotional. And when you connect your personal experience with those lyrics, along with uh, the, the frequencies of the music, it's a powerful healing tool, but I have, I'll go back to your question. It has to happen with yourself as an artist in your personal mm. time so you can effectively help and change and transform others' lives. Got it. Got it. So, Dr. Tart, I'm going to go back to you because <clears throat> I know you're, you've spent some time dedicated to improving the relationships between children and families improving mental health and improving faith. Do you incorporate music at all in these three elements of, of mental health? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, my oldest daughter is 17. Tell me a better way to connect, right? <laughs> so, so yeah, so uh, for her, for Christmas, I bought her, and the church going to talk about me, but it is what it is. I bought her scissor tickets, all right? So scissor came to town, and we were talking about why she liked 
SZA, I didn't even know who SZA was, but then when I thought about the tickets, I started following her Pandora. And I said, hey, whoa, let's talk about this. And it, it mm. actually opened up. It actually opened up a, a very healthy conversation about the lyrics, the songs, um, relationship, uh, whether she enjoyed school, what music mm-hmm. does for her. And my daughter was saying that that was her number one stress reliever. Because, like me, she's frontward facing, being in school leadership, and singing allowed her to not only get away, uh, but also to be happy when she's singing. So something happens when she's singing that makes her happy. So I understand the role that music takes in her life, and it actually opened up uh, a great conversation. Because, you know, the the Ad Council has these stories. conversation starter packs and so mm-hmm. one of them asked like what would you be and and, and one of her ambitions uh, is to incorporate you know music into making the community feel better and I didn't know it was that deep for her I thought she was just listening you mm-hmm. know to, to music but to know that it's a passion of hers uh, opened up um, opened up a, a great great conversation and I listen to music when I work out because I don't like working out but when I listen, yes. I listen to my Afro beats. It's in psychology, we call it pairing. You pair something you like with something you don't like to make you do the thing you don't like more. And so uh, I use music as, as therapy to work out, which gives me more stress tolerance and, and gives me better health in the, in the morning and the evenings after work. Mm, oh, for sure. I had, I had to take off the, the slow yeah. songs on gospel. I said, come on now. I need something with speed up. I'm never going to finish this Peloton. <laughs> right. Absolutely. So Latrice, you can so you can actually relate to to Dr. Tart's daughter and in, in the fact that music is therapy and, and he was saying when she sings. Yes, I, I absolutely can. Um I can also relate to him saying he had to take off the gospel and you know get something with a a, a I guess a more a better BPM. That's what I'll say. And I remember actually talking to a, a industry profes- professional and I was like, why aren't any gospel artists uh, creating motivational fitness music for those that want music that without, you know, the um, without the profanity or just knowing that it's coming from a quote unquote clean vessel? I've actually written two motivational fitness songs coming from the gospel perspective so that people in the gospel industry could feel free with to feel free to play that knowing that, okay, we are aligned or whatever. Um, and all it is, it is healing. I, I, I agree with pairing it with something you don't care, particularly care to do, uh, is motivating, is healing, is stimulating. It music is just, it's, and it's universal. It's something everybody can relate to. You know, there is music is a language all on its own. You, you don't, you don't have to understand it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. And, you know, and I find that, you know, there's a time yeah. for those, those, you know, jump up and down, you know, gospel music songs. And then there's also a time for the slow ones yes. too. You know, I'm, I'm a person who I actually lost my sister yeah. and um, about two years ago, I lost her. And I find that, you know, those slow songs okay. actually help me get it out. Sometimes you just need that good cry. And I need that slow do- gospel song to help me get there. I, I, mean- I can totally relate. I can totally relate to that. Um, I have I lost my mother and two of my sisters within a two year span, and music has been extremely uh, instrumental in um, aware being aware that they are gone especially playing their music that they recorded, uh, accept, accepting God's will that they are mm-hmm. gone and mm-hmm. even healing and uh, coping with the loss or the fact that they are gone. So music is healing. It, it taps into every emotion. Yeah. It, it allows us to go down memory lane and you have an appreciation for even the times you spent with them. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's, it's extremely instrumental. Yeah. Yes. And yeah, let me say that I'm sorry for your loss. Yes. And, and I'm saying that sincerely. And I'm also talking about as a community is that a lot of our kids have had to deal with losses. And it's one of the most difficult things to talk to kids about. Yes. You know, we have resources at sounditouttogether.org about having a conversation. How do you open up conversation 
with your kids. And so we're talking about music. You know, music gives you a great opportunity. Say, hey, in, in this in this song, artist was talking about losing someone. How do you feel about losing your father, losing your mother, losing grandma, losing papa? A lot of times as parents, we think that if we bring it up, we're going to traumatize our kids. But the opposite is true. Yes. We get distance. We get distance from things that are stressful by talking about it, mm. right? And and so we have to model that by checking on our kids on a regular basis and ask them, you know, not, not only about loss of family members, but I'm here in Atlanta, Georgia. I have a lot of clients who have lost friends to mm. to gun violence, yeah. to to violence in the community, to d- disease, to COVID, yeah. um, so on and so forth. So so as parents, and again, I want you to go to SoundItOutTogether.org because I know you need that clear direction on how to communicate to your kids. Because we have to talk to our if you haven't talked to your children about grief and loss post COVID with almost everyone dealing with either the loss of family, loss of school, loss of social relationships, please do so. We have to talk about it because too often we we are pressured to um, hurry up and get over the pain because we are uncomfortable with the pain and even those around us become mm-hmm. uncomfortable with the pain. But we have to talk about it and, and just press stop on the world and everything and deal with it. Absolutely. This is great conversation. And I don't want to, to, to end it here, but um, we also want to do um, a fun segment here on how sweet the sound behind the music podcast. So we like to play a little game um, called getting to know you. Where we ask just three fun random questions. Um, we it's not questions that we've given you already, and you have no idea what I'm about to ask. Uh-uh. But um, <laughs> yeah, we didn't approve this up front. We didn't, we... <laughs> that's right. That's right. So, would you both love to play? Yes, I love games. Awesome, awesome. So you know what, Miss. Lucretia? Notice I did not respond, but let's roll with it. I'll play. I'll play. I'll play. <laughs> So, Miss Latrice, we are going to start with you. And this question is going to go to you too, Dr. Tart, right after Latrice responds. But what is the one item that you cannot live without? A sunflower. Ooh, a sunflower. Please elaborate. The color yellow, I didn't realize it then, but it's something about um, the dark center of the sunflower Mm -hmm. and the yellow petals emerging from that darkness. It just makes me happy. I I have like flower tattoos. They're in my car. They're in my house. They're they're a symbol of happiness and loyalty. So I love them. Oh my goodness. My favorite color is yellow. So I, it brings me joy. It's like sunshine. So I get it. I get it. Dr. Tart, what is the one thing you can't live without? Since we're having fun, my family's going to tell me a new suit. Right. If I want a new suit, you know, how you show up to the world is how they treat you, you know. So, yeah, a new a new suit It's spring. I need something with a little pop, a little color. So if y'all know someone, send them to me. I like it. <laughs> oh, man. Fashion. I love it. I love it. Miss Latrice, if you had the opportunity to speak with one of these powerful black women, who would it be and why? Would it be Michelle Obama? Would it be Oprah or would it be Kamala Harris? Oh my goodness. It would be Oprah mm, mm-hmm. because uh, because she is, I, I, the others are entrepreneurs, but they're more in politics. Mm-hmm. And I, even though I am aware, but I'm not a political person, but I am aware and I do vote. Let's put that out there. Um, <laughs> It would be Oprah because we have we're around the same age and we've we've walked similar paths. Mm, mm, I love it. Love it. Dr. Tart. Last question. If you could possess one superhero power, what would it be and why? Ooh, I'm going to. I, <laughs> I was going to say the ability to read people's minds, but I yeah, see yeah. how that might yeah. back. You know, a psychologist is going to say yeah. that. 
Oh my goodness. Let me find out that Beyonce. Let me find out Beyonce thinks I'm cute. Let me see that. And oh my goodness. My wife and I'm like, baby, you don't understand what's in her brain. But then I also I also would know that um my wife probably loves Usher more than me. So I don't, I don't know about this super I don't know about this superpower. So I, I might need to think of another one. But right now I'm gonna roll with that one. But if I can return it, if I can get a return on that, if I can take that back to the store. <laughs> oh okay dr tar miss latrice before we wrap up i want to ask you both are there any last words of advice or wisdom that you can give to our parents out there listening who are eager to start a conversation with their their teenagers or their youth about mental awareness and um and, and stress or, you know, whatever they're dealing with. Are there any words of wisdom on how they can start a conversation? Well, yes. uh, Surgeon General just put out a report saying that one in two Americans, children, adults are lonely. And so we have to make sure that we're connecting with our children outside of their cell phones. So that means we need to sit down and have a relationship with our kids. We need to have time. Love needs to be spelled T-I-M-E. So we have to come off our phones Come off of work, come off of our sports and our hobbies and make sure that we're eating dinner with our kids. We're connecting with them for at least 15 to 30 minutes a day and getting into their worlds. We also have to make sure that our kids are being social versus being on social media. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we thrive in community and we die in isolation. And a lot of our kids had to adapt during COVID to be isolated for safety. But now all the studies are showing that our kids are suffering. And so we have to help our kids have three to four solid kids who they hang around and, and, and do life with. And we also have to make sure that we're validating our kids. The, res the reports are saying that our kids' self-esteem is low. They don't know who they are at school. They don't know who they are in this world. They don't know uh, who they are on social media. And so we have to validate them and we have to build them up as, as parents. And if you're dealing with a mental health issue, make sure that you call your insurance provider. All of them have a member number on there. And you call and they will link you up with providers because it is very difficult to do this on your own. Yes. But your health insurance will actually, I get these every day where they send out these emails and say, who wants to take on this client? And then lastly, if you feel like you, you know you want to talk to someone right now, or you want your teen to talk to someone right now, mm -hmm. you can dial 988 on your phone. 988 and they can be linked to a mental health counselor to link them up with mental health services or talk to them right then and there mm -hmm. and then also remember the sounded out campaign get the starter conversation packs and guides so that you have structure because it's very difficult to talk to kids it's very difficult we ask them how was your day how you doing they say fine 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 we have to ask <laughs> different questions yeah. to check in on them like one is like on a scale of one to ten how happy are you with life right now? And you'd be surprised how many teens will say three, four, five, and then you can open up and have a real conversation about how to feel better. Yes, I would uh, offer suggestions or, you know, to, to caregivers, uh, being that I was one for three years for my mother, it's, I would say to them that it's, although it's a uniquely rewarding experience, um, it's also taxing on you mentally. And physically, because it's such a 24-7 demanding job, and without the proper support, uh, the proper help, it mm. can take a toll on you physically, and even on your psyche, you could burn out. I will say to have a talk or uh, leave the conversation open with family members or people that you know to say, hey, I'm, I'm feeling burnt out. I need help. I need assistance. There are even uh, state... Um, uh, programs that will offer uh, respite care, respite mm -hmm. care if you are feeling burnt out or you need a break. But allow those that are around you to know that, hey, I'm not doing good. I thought I had it. Uh, I need time. So mm -hmm. I would say to them, say that, speak up and say something. You're not superwoman. You're not superman. And also take care of yourself. Make yourself a priority. Right. Oh, man. Well, this has been so fun. Dr. Tart, Miss Latrice, thank you so much for spending some time with us. You, both of you are very busy individuals and time is precious. So thank you for allowing us to take some of that time from you. 
Um, it has truly been a pleasure, and we hope that you are not a stranger to How Sweet the Sound Behind the Music podcast, and we hope that you'll come back and visit with us later. Thank you for listening to How Sweet the Sound Behind the Music. We're coming to Atlanta on June 3rd, 2023 at the Cobb Performing Energy Center. Tickets are on sale now, so go to Ticketmaster.com or howsweetthesound.com.